Good afternoon from Epcot. We are here today for a media event for a preview of Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival, which starts on March 4th and runs through June 1st. But the media event doesn't start for a couple of hours, so I wanted to kind of wander around Epcot for a little bit, have a look around, see what we could see. I know that they've started preparing for the Flower and Garden Festival. I wanted to see what kind of topiaries we could see, what kind of flowers we could see, and also see what they've left up and taken down from Epcot's Festival of the Arts which just ended a couple of days ago. Also, because of the state of Epcot right now, we will be showing a lot of construction that's going on because the entire front half of the park is pretty much under construction. So we started off by heading to the right of Spaceship Earth. And right now we are over by the Seas with Nemo and Friends. And I'm trying to give you guys an idea of what this park is like right now because it's very ridiculous as far as construction walls go. Like it's kind of hard to figure out where to go. So what I'm trying to do right now is make my way all the way around this Communicore area here to where the Fountain of Nations used to be. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys where we're headed to. Like I said, very difficult to show because of all of the construction walls. Just to give you guys some wayfinding. Spaceship Earth is kind of back there. This is where Mickey and Friends used to meet and like Baymax used to meet. And uh, there's a bathroom over here, which is nice. This side has two bathrooms on it, whereas the other side, if you go to the left of Spaceship Earth, doesn't have any bathrooms. Oh yeah, we're starting to see topiaries out and about. We're sort of near the Imagination Pavilion. There's the reverse waterfall over there. The land is kind of over there. And we've got Mickey, Sorcerer Mickey. And then we've got these ballet dancing ostriches. They have really like stepped up their game with topiary faces these past few years. These ostriches have eyelashes. This demolition you're looking at right here is what is left of the area that used to be the Starbucks and the Mickey and Friends meet and greet. You can see Spaceship Earth over there. But I wanted to point in this direction and show you guys this quilt work over here. Today is not a very nice day out. It's cloudy and it's not hot, but I think it's gonna rain later. So these colors are probably not as nice as they would be in broad daylight, like straight on sun, but I still think it looks very nice. I like being able to see all of the different flowers like move in the breeze. Okay, this construction wall just keeps pushing further and further out. This is where mouse gear used to be. And if you guys look carefully, you can see they've already cut a giant hole in the wall and they're doing some demolition in there. Wow, yeah, lots and lots of construction going on. Wow, yeah, as we back further away, look at this view into mouse gear. The entire outside wall has just been pulled off. So this building will be gone very soon, just like over here where Starbucks was. So during Festival of the Arts, there was some rainbows here for a photo op. They have taken those out and just replaced them with standard flowers. I have a feeling that this will change in the next few days, getting ready for Flower and Garden Festival. Also, there used to be a stage out there on the waterfront that is now gone. So that means that there will not be any live shows in this area during Flower and Garden Festival. They have already put up some of the signs teasing Flower and Garden Festival over top of some of the booths. Like this will be another merchandise booth, but you can see here, Flower and Garden Festival coming March 4th through June 1st. Oh, they did change some of the signs so that they have the names. So this won't be the Citrus Blossom. And a few days ago, this was Deconstructed Dish or Festival of the Arts. Oh, I'm so darn excited. I can't wait to try some food a little bit later, which I think we should be able to do during this preview that we're going to. Yes, we're getting into some really fun topiaries. Like here is Miss Piggy. She looks extremely surprised, doesn't she? Ah! Kermit, on the other hand, is perfect. This is the perfect topiary. Look at that. That is amazing. Look at that, even his bike is made of wood. Or at least it looks like it's made of wood. Maybe it is. I feel like the last time I was here, I showed you guys the Winnie the Pooh character topiaries, like Tigger and Eeyore and Piglet. And then over here is Rabbit and Pooh. I always get the locations of topiaries confused from year to year. So this year, Peter Pan and Hook are over here, but in years past, Peter Pan has been up on top of buildings before, but now he's down here on the ground level just outside the fish and chips. So there's kind of a lot happening in the France Pavilion over here. We've got Beauty and the Beast here in the center. Got a Remy thing over here and there's a new archway over there. Let's go get a little closer look at all of them. Look at Remy right here. This is an awesome topiary. I like this one a lot. And then kind of back here, there's a new archway with what looks like will be a sign. We don't know what's going to be on the sign, but this will be where you would go to get on Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and get to a couple of other new areas back there when they finally open. And there's Beauty and the Beast. The Beast doesn't look as mean as he did in the movies. He kind of looks older, doesn't he? Quite a stark difference in crowd levels between the last day of Festival of the Arts and today, just a Wednesday before 
Flower and Garden Festival. This is interesting, right here in front of the Tori, there's this topiary dragon. That looks amazing. I've never seen this before. This must be new, unless there has been an occasion where I just don't pay close enough attention and I've missed this dragon in years past, but I don't know, it doesn't look familiar to me. Here's the other thing. Are those little lights underneath its little scales there? Does this thing light up at night? Or is that just how they hold the scales on? Oh, they're kind of hidden. I almost missed them. But right here, across from the Italy Pavilion, behind these booths, which I don't think these will be here for Flower and Garden Festival. They were here for Festival of the Arts. The reason I don't think they'll be there is because they'll be blocking Lady and the Tramp. Which these are, I like that they use the animated classic rather than the new live action for the basis for these characters. This is awesome. I like that there's flowers everywhere and they're sitting in a bed of flowers. It looks really neat. All right, so we've made it over to the China Pavilion. They've got some panda topiaries over here. These are adorable. I do like that there's like a new style of topiary and an old style of topiary. This is what I would call the old style of topiary where the entire animal's made out of plants. There's no like moss or anything like that. And there's not like extreme details in the face, but you can tell that it's still a panda. Let me give you guys an example of what I think is the opposite of that. This is my example of the extreme opposite of that. The Anna and Elsa topiaries, look at their faces. Like these are human faces on plants. It is so detailed. It almost looks more like a sculpture than a topiary. And I think I like the older style topiaries better where it's not like a sculpture, more like a topiary. This troll out in front of Norway is kind of like a mix between the two. A little bit new, a little bit old. And I think that this one has been around for a long time and this was probably like their first attempt at trying to make it a little bit more realistic. I think his eyes have yellowed over the years. Well, we knew it was coming and it just started. I don't know if you guys can see the raindrops on the water, but it is raining right now. I got my umbrella though, so we are good to go. Oh, it just stopped. All right, well, it's done raining now. I don't think that'll be the last of it though, for sure. Well, we made it all the way around World Showcase. I thought for sure there was gonna be a three Caballeros topiary right here that we could see, but I think we've seen the majority of the topiaries. I know that there are a few kind of back here to the right of Spaceship Earth, but where you have to go to the media event now. So let's go taste some of the food. So sorry about the background noise, but I'm actually in the test kitchen for Epcot right now for the festival test kitchen. But we do have a table showing off some of the merch for Flower and Garden Festival. These are awesome. You can see that they are focusing kind of on Spike the Bee. Look at this Turvis tumbler too. I love these little salt and pepper shakers that are trash cans. Also, this looks so cool. I like this flower pot coffee mug. We have a little keychain here. We've got some Dooney and Burke bags. And this one is pass holder exclusive. They have a hat that matches the Dooney and Burke bags. And then Minnie also is featured on a lot of different items around here. Oh look, and this is like one of those flip sequins ones, the two different sequins. Oh my goodness, look at the orange bird ears. And this lounge fly backpack is amazing. I love this. Look at this orange bird vintage looking cup. Oh, look at this orange bird pitcher too. We have an orange bird spirit jersey. We get some annual pass holder only mugs and these two, Mickey and Minnie, will be available on day one. And then Spikes and Donald and Figment will be available on April 20th. Nice little pass holder shirt too. Oh, I totally missed these reusable straws too. And is this a pin? I think it might be a pin. Oh man, I feel like there's so many things that I missed at this table before. This is a little garden steak. That is so much fun. Spike and Donald on a little, this is like a, like a fleece throw almost, but it rolls up and wraps around you so that you could take it on a picnic. That is awesome. And I like this shirt too, it's buzzing around. They also told us that this isn't the only spirit jersey. There's also a Minnie Mouse spirit jersey that's gonna be tie-dyed, and it'll be this style of Minnie Mouse, like this artwork. And they said that there's going to be a spirit slicker, which is like a raincoat in the style of a spirit jersey, 
The Spirit jerseys are $69.99, and the Spirit Slicker is $39.99. So a nice addition on a lower price point in the Spirit line. Oh my goodness. There's like a flower crown that you can get too. I just noticed that. Look at that. Brilliant. So the stroll this year is called the Garden Graze, and when you complete it, you get a little packet of seeds. And these are purple, dark, opal, basil, and you also get a little slush too. Nice little addition to getting a edible prize. You get a take home prize too. Items we'll talk about are from our new outdoor kitchen, Magnolia Terrace. So the first item you have is our seafood boil. So it's gonna feature corn, potatoes, andouille sausage, shrimp, mussels, and crawfish. We're gonna be putting these into mesh bags and then steaming them open on stage in a really fragrant beer broth, serving them right to the guests as they come out of the broth. So a pretty traditional take on a, a southern style seafood boil. Then we have our uh, Gulf Coast oysters. So these are gonna be grilled. We're gonna grill these out on stage as well. Uh, these oysters are actually from the Gulf Coast of Texas, and we're going to be finishing them with a little Cajun butter out on stage, and then really hoping to be able to kind of hand them directly to the guests as they finish up on the grill. Uh, then we have also from Magnolia Terrace, the boudin. So we're doing boudin two ways. Boudin is a traditional Louisiana sausage. It's made with pork and then they bind it with rice in the inside. So we're doing it two ways where we have the actual sausage that we're making in-house, smoking it and then grilling it. And then we have the boudin ball, which is kind of a tasty Louisiana treat that you find kind of in some local gas station convenience stores. It's essentially rice with more of the sausage inside, deep fried, and we're serving it with a little bit of Creole remoulade on top. From our flavorful kitchen, this is our grilled vegetable skewer. So this is really what Flower and Garden is all about. This is the best of what springtime has to offer. Great springtime flavors. We're gonna be grilling these on stage as well. Fresh vegetables, a little hummus cream, some red pepper coulis on the plate. And this is a plant-based item for us as well. So uh, we have several different plant-based items this year and our stroll for this festival is called the Garden Graze. And it'll be a sampling of several of our different plant-based options that we will have at this year's Flower and Garden Festival. So only plant-based options on there or? Yes, yeah, so this oh. is kind of like a plant-based stroll. So everything awesome. on the stroll will be plant-based and then you get a nice redemption prize at the end once you complete the stroll. That is awesome. Also from Magnolia Terrace, we have our praline cookie. So this comes from our bakery team. This is a pretty traditional pecan praline. And then our, our, our pastry team also came up with this uh, fantastic trio of popsicles, a honeydew melon, a raspberry, and a coconut lime popsicle. And these will be coming out of our, uh, the refreshment port. Wow, where's the refreshment port located so at? So the refreshment port is the area right in between Canada and where the Starbucks is. Perfect. So it's kind of that little refreshment area kind of stuck back in there a little bit. Excellent, and that's very near flavorful where this is coming from. Yeah, so this will be kind of, if you're familiar with flower, uh, food and wine, kind of up in the, where the chocolate studio is, kind of in that Rose Walk area. Okay. Then they also are going to have... Spike the Bee. Uh, mm -hmm. He will be coming from the Honey Bistro, along with the drink, the uh, Honey Peach Slushy. And he is about as cute as they come, so... <laughs> and then we Sporks, to too. Be very, very popular. And the Sporks as well. All right, we're all done with the tasting. I'm back out in Epcot now, but it is pouring rain. So I think I'm gonna head home and give you guys my thoughts on the dishes that I tried. All right, so now I'm home, out of the rain, a little bit, got a little bit soaked, but not terrible. And you guys noticed that there was like an, an obvious jump between us walking around and then it's time for the media event. That media event was probably one of the most interesting ones I've ever been to because we went into the test kitchen for Epcot. Like the Epcot Festival food is all developed in the kitchen that we were in. And because it is backstage and because it's a very secure area, I wasn't able to show myself walking there. I wasn't able to show myself going in. I wasn't able to show anywhere other than the tables that they had set up for us and the food that I was eating. Couldn't even show myself eating the food. Couldn't give you guys reactions in the moment. It was very secure and very interesting and like amazing to see. 
It's something I've never done before. Matter of fact, it's something nobody's ever done before. This is the first time that they had any media into that kitchen to do any sort of tastings like this. So let's go through some of the food that we tried. You guys got to see, and here's another fun fact is a little bit of like media jargon. The table that they had set up with the showcase food, that's called the hero table. So that table is referred to as the hero table because that is not mass produced food. It is food that is made to look beautiful for the camera and it is made with the specifications that they make all of the other dishes too. So the first dish that we got to try was the boudin from Magnolia Terrace, which is over near the America Pavilion. And if you guys don't know what boudin is, it's basically just like pork and rice shoved into a sausage or rolled into a ball and deep fried. This was fantastic. Had a great flavor, had a nice spicy mustard on the sausage, and had a Trinity Ramelade on the boudin ball. It was good. I can't wait for the festival to try it again. And those were available at Magnolia Terrace, which is over near the America Pavilion. Also available at Magnolia Terrace was that Low Country Boil, which I didn't try, but it did look very good. I'm excited for Jen to try it when she goes to the event because it was full of all sorts of seafood. It looked like mussels and shrimp and crawfish and potatoes. And then it was in a beer broth. I don't know, I think Jen will really enjoy that one. So up next we had the grilled baby vegetable skewers, which in our case, they were not skewered. They were set out on the plate the way that they're going to be displayed during the festival. Those are from a booth called Flavorful over by the new Starbucks location. These were really good. I really enjoyed the mixture of flavors of the hummus sauce and the red pepper coulis on the grilled vegetables. The three flavors together, like the smokiness of the grill, the hummus and the red pepper really went well together. And the last little bit of food that we got to try was from the refreshment port, and that was the three popsicles and the pecan praline. That darn pecan praline was so good. I cannot wait to eat more and more and more of those. Unfortunately, it was a lot, a lot of sugar. So I know that as soon as I get through one, I'm just gonna be like, oh no, I have a tummy ache now, but I want to eat more of them because it was so delicious. The only thing that I feel like would have made it even better would be chocolate chips, but I don't know if that's even possible. Putting chocolate chips in a pecan praline, I've never seen it, but the idea in my head sounds so good. And then the three popsicles. So the first one was honeydew with compressed honeydew and the honeydew popsicle, everybody at the table around me said that it was their favorite, but for me it was my least favorite because it was kind of, it had more of an ice flavor to it, like an ice feeling in your mouth. It was very cold and it wasn't as like creamy as the other ones. The other ones had like a real nice smooth texture, but when you bit into the honeydew one, it had like that crunch of ice and I didn't like it as much. It was still good, but I think that the other two were much, much better. The middle one was raspberry with mint sugar on it and the raspberry was so creamy. And then once you got a little bite of that mint sugar, it kind of gave it a twist, like a little kick in a different direction that you weren't expecting because it's like such mint sugar flavor with the raspberry, but it went fantastically together. And then the last one was coconut lime with passion fruit curd. This one was delicious. This one was my favorite one of the three. I wish I could get a full size of this. Super creamy, not incredibly cold and icy like the first one was. And then that passion fruit curd kind of gave it a little bit of a twist. It made it feel like you had were like on vacation in your mouth, like you're in a tropical island somewhere. It was so good. So all in all, I am so excited for Flower and Garden Festival for some of these new food dishes and some of the returning food dishes. We love a good food festival. Epcot does a really good job of giving you a huge variety of food and all kinds of different stuff to do around the festivals. It's gonna be fun. So thank you to Disney for having us out for this special preview of Flower and Garden Festival food. And with that being said, we are off and we will see you guys tomorrow. This is David and William from the UK and now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.